here we are again back to episode two of love on the rocks and here we go again with cats annoying me mm. in episode one you met oh 24 year old girl very seven years in the industry entertainment zone very astute businesswoman she'd heard of this um, method of extracting money from foreigners as in getting married in the village to them taking the sin sod the dowry payment that the foreigner pays to her family which sometimes the foreigner gets back but in this case he wasn't going to get it back she met a guy called Dave made a fake family rented a house with some actresses and relieved Dave of a considerable amount of money went off to Phuket had a honeymoon and then dumped him after his return back home by email Dave obviously tried every way he could to contact her and he just married her but she just blanked him totally she was still in Phuket she had netted, I don't know, half a million plus baht from this scheme of hers. But even with information she'd been given from other girls that were doing this and the fact that she was heartless, it didn't sit good in her mind, which means there might have been a bit of a heart there. Her plan was to continue doing this rinse and repeat, find another foreigner, do the same again and it could be done, it probably is being done by some unscrupulous girls around Asia she was in a, a bar in the evening in Phuket just off Bangla Road she was feeling a little bit down which was strange but she had this money sat in the bank, plus the couple of million she'd already made over the previous seven years. She was sat pretty in life with finances for a, for a Thai girl at 24 years old. She got talking to a girl in the bar. She knew this girl from a, through a friend. She'd been in Phuket quite a few years on and off, as well as Patea and Bangkok. And this girl had explained to O that she'd just lost her golden goose the one foreigner she had that was extremely rich he'd caught her out she had four or five other boyfriends she was emailing they were sending her money somehow he'd caught her out and after a big scene that day he finished with her and this girl was really upset because it was the best customer she would had and she tried to get him back and say that she'd finished with all these guys and all the rest of it and he wouldn't have it he just like end and walked away oh had heard about foreigners with extremely large amounts of money but in her seven years never encountered a a whale as Vegas probably called them I was very intrigued of course being a businesswoman she started saying where is he what's he doing how long is he here for and this other girl told him told her that he still had two weeks he'd only just come he had two weeks he was in a five-star hotel down on the beach at the front two weeks here um, and showed him pictures showed old pictures now, oh, being the businesswoman she was, she said to this girl, you're totally finished. How about I go after him and I'll compensate you if I succeed in landing him. It's like going out for a, a fishing expedition, isn't it? Catching the foreigner, hooking the whale. Hmm. Anyway, this girl agreed she had nothing to lose. 
she's going to get a bit of free money maybe. So, told oh, everything about this guy. And uh, he was American. He was in the oil industry. She knew that much. His name was Gene. G-E-N-E, -E, I believe. She explained to her which hotel he was in and uh, his habits that when he was with her he nearly always um, how you evil Ron ow ah will you pack it in you little evil evil little cat evil 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 Get off! You're ruining the story! She explained to O oh, that, yeah, his patterns, he, he likes eating at the best restaurants. He spent every day money on this girl on new clothes, top end clothes. And he liked flying around the country shopping. Um, Of course, O was like, okay, I like the idea of this. She worked out where the hotel was and she said to this girl that she would change her appearance slightly, do some of her usual tricks and invest some money in this catch. She said goodnight to this girl for the night. Off she went to this hotel just to have a prowl around the outside to work out. She hadn't stayed at this hotel before. There was a low wall at the front on the beach side. You could see the swimming pool area. And couldn't see the guy. She wasn't going to go in. She wasn't dressed appropriately. So she headed off home. She was renting a room in Phuket City and she didn't have that many clothes and things with her. First thing in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, shops open. Off she went to the shopping centre. Was it the Jungler shop or whatever it is? Straight into a couple of smart shops. And she bought some expensive clothes. Well, reasonably expensive. She spent three or four thousand baht on a couple of outfits. Back to her room. She got swimming costume. She got all her bits and pieces, cosmetics. Packed a bag. Now she was renting a room here, she was renting a room up in Patea, so she knew what she was doing. Packed a bag, headed to the hotel. Via a travel agent, another girl she knew, little shop near the shopping centre. wonder if her name was May. And got this girl to book her into this hotel for two nights online standard room and it was about 3,500 baht a night she paid the travel agent that's an investment and just before 12 o'clock she headed to the hotel she hailed a taxi on the second road as to arrive in a taxi ah. and he went around the corner to the hotel off to the hotel in she goes, smartly dressed, checked in. Put her stuff in a room, basic room, headed downstairs. Nice clothes, got a hat, sunglasses, got a book, almost like a movie. She's prowling. Now, midday, she knows this guy's either going to be eating or he's going to be by the pool drinking he's not on a shopping expedition now she's took a gamble I mean she doesn't know he's still there she's invested a bit of money but it pays off she approaches swimming pool area she spots him this girl gave her sent her a copy of his photo looking at the phone and there he is sat on the other side of the pool she surveys the seats and tables around and decides to get within 
15 feet of him at another table. But if he was going to go to the bar, he'd have to walk past her. So she goes and puts herself on a table, puts a book down, towel and everything else, but she's not dressed for swimming. Goes across the bar, gets herself a soft drink and sits down. Phone on silent, makes the book up, she's got a drink, she's in eyes shot of this guy of Jean and she just relaxes back. Nobody's talking to her, she's on her own. He's on his own. He spotted her. She knows he spotted her. And she just carries on reading. Now he's probably not even thinking about a girl in a hotel, meeting a girl in a hotel. He's probably thinking of meeting a girl in the bars. And at some point he's gonna be starting to think about going off to the bars. So, very, just like a movie, she walks directly past him, heading to the lavatory. Book in hand, drops the book just as she's next to him. And she, of course, bending down to get the book, he also lets him get the book first. He picks it up. Here you go. In perfect English, she says to him, Thank you very much, that's very kind of you. And walks off to the lavatory. As she's coming back, she's smiling at him. Walks straight past him, sits down. <laughs> of course, that's all she had to do. His curiosity, a well-dressed Thai lady, smiling, looks like she's on her own. Up he goes. He's going to the bar to get a drink, and as he pulls, as he walks next to her, he says to her, My name's Jean. Would you like a drink? You've almost finished yours. And O says, That would be lovely. My name's O. He tells him real name. I want so and so drink. And off he goes, gets the drinks, comes back. May I join you? Usual stuff. Yeah, of course you can. And that's it. He sat down. And they start talking and talking. She's got him. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's invested a few thousand baht. She's already hooked him. Um, and then she makes up some story about that she'd uh, lost her partner a year ago. She was a businesswoman. She invested a little bit in stocks and shares and came up with all sorts of weird information um, that really he couldn't check and uh, was she thinking about the sin sod at this point or was she thinking of just catching him I don't know but she she hooked him she says uh, it's about one o'clock it's only about one o'clock one thirty she says uh, I'm a little bit hungry I'd like to get some food really lovely to meet you um, maybe if you're about later we could uh, meet up again she set the date up for the evening and he immediately how about I buy you a uh, dinner tonight we go somewhere nice and she's like she hesitates and pauses you know. she says okay that would be nice so he arranges to meet her in reception 7pm off she goes Back to her room. <sighs> Sleeps or whatever, chills, relaxes. She bought a couple of outfits, so she's got another one for an evening, so she'll be okay there. And of course, she's ready. She's uh, given him the bait, he's bitten, she's got him on the hook. Now all she has to do is decide which way to take him. An express train to a village marriage or a slow train to see how far he will go. Mm. Seven o'clock comes, she's dressed, ready. She comes down five minutes late, he's there waiting. Walks across, he puts his hand out to shake her hand and she just 
leans forward, kisses her, him on the cheek. Mm. <laughs> Ignores his hand. Surprised him a bit. Anyway, he's organised the uh, hotel taxi limo. And off they go, up over the top of the hill to somewhere, Karen Beach Way, to a nice restaurant that does all sorts of food. They have a lovely meal. Very nice evening, music. They talk more and more, and she makes him talk a lot more than she's talking. End of the evening. He pays the bill, comes outside, gets a taxi, normal taxi, back to the hotel. In they walk to reception, and at that point, he's absolute gentleman. He's that was a lovely evening, fantastic evening, and she's saying, "Yep, yeah, it was really nice. It was great to get to know you." Um, he says, could we spend some time together tomorrow? Have you got plans? And she said, well, really I'm supposed to, uh, one more day here, another night, and then I was going to head back to Bangkok for some business. But I'm flexible. It's my own business and I, that I run in with everything. His eyes light up. He says, can we go shopping tomorrow? I, I've got to buy some bits and pieces and I don't like shopping alone. There are some nice shops around here. And uh, it'd be nice if you'd join me. Huh? Certainly, Jean. Of course I'll join you for some shopping. Knowing full well you've got a pocket full of money and probably platinum and gold credit cards. He leans forward. Gives her a kiss on the cheek. Says good night. About ten o'clock in the morning, we'll head off. Yep. And off she goes. Walks off alone. Gentleman. So he heads off. It's just a standard meeting. It's just you know, it's everybody knows the pattern. Are you going to turn out like the evil Ron? Mm. And are you going to turn out like the evil Ron? Hope not. And the noises all start as usual. Let's leave it there. No twist as of yet. Which route will she take? The marriage or the financial extraction long term? Hmm, interesting. She's seven years, professional. She probably knows every trick in the book. How can she get a large amount of money out of him on the slow burner without doing the marriage? What possibly could he buy her? What could she ask for? How many buttons can she push? Poor old Jean. See you on the next one. Bye for now.